Hey everyone, it's Liam Caddison here, and we're reacting to another episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is episode 7 of season 5. Looking forward to jumping into this episode, especially given how this season has gone. It's been a very, very impressive season so far. And last episode got a bit emotional. Um, yes, uh, we had an episode focused on Taro, which is greatly appreciated because I welcome more development on her character. And yeah, at the start of the last episode, Tara didn't feel integrated with the Scooby. She didn't feel like she was a part of their group. But I think that changed, that thought changed, uh, given how the episode played out because um, we had Tara's manipulative blood relatives because difference between family and blood relatives, don't get me started. But yeah, they tried to take Tara away and they 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 practically enforced manip uh, manipulative tactics, especially given how things proceeded. Um, there was a little comment, actually, because uh, I made a mention in uh, the review about why did they not, why did they basically jump the gun regarding Tara as a demon, etc. And um, a big thank you to someone who pointed this out on the Patreon page, because uh, a certain um, bit from Spike completely flew over my head. Uh, but it wasn't more so about jumping the gun. It was more so about um, keeping women in line, which is... To be fair, even worse, because that's manipulative, but then again, these bunch of uh, idiots, you expect no different. They were manipulative. I don't think anyone has any respect for Tara's family, so yeah. But Tara's real family belongs with the Scoobies, as like I said, they defended her and it was a really beautiful moment. So like I said, I expect things to be a bit more lenient in terms of... Um, Tara and the Scoobies, I feel like she's now going to be more part of that now that we had that episode. So yeah, but I'm excited to see what this episode does have in store. So with that said, let's get in to episode number seven of season five of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Let's go. Is my face red? But just so you know, the fast growing field of personal grooming's come a long way since... Kind of looks like, he, he kind of has Michael Jackson hair. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa, 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 okay! Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh! Riley? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, uh, mine. Um, some nail polish experiments are doomed before they even begin. <laughs> But you keep pushing the envelope, honey. <laughs> oh, I love how she's sticking up for her. Did I just pull a Slayer-related mom cover-up thing? Come on. Who's the man? You are. A very short, annoying man. <laughs> so the vampires who don't know we're coming will have a sporting chance. See, now he's all mad and sarcastic. Because you were doing all the yelling, Mr. Stealthy Pants. Exactly. <laughs> guys, I'm thinking if we split up, we can cover more ground. Tell you Never what. Never split the party. I'll take the cemeteries. Uh, you guys get the bronze. Are we not being covert enough? We're sorry. Sorry. We'll be sneakier. Promise. <laughs> okay. As Just he's munching on chips. chips. Tell the tales. What? <laughs> Ow! Wait, not Al. Are you feeling all right, Slayer? This stuff usually hurts. Don't even start, Spike. What do you want? Slayers. You killed two of them. That he did. Just tell me what I want to know. I told you. No one's narrating on an empty stomach here. Were you born this big a pain in the ass? What can I tell you, baby? <laughs> I've always been bad. Luminous. Oh, no, 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 no. Are we, are we, wait, are we getting Spike back? Yes! Give me some wings! Not expands. It has grown a bulge in it. Inspired by your beauty, effulgent. Effulgent. <laughs> Spike! <laughs> He's an artist! Is that you try to see me... I do see you. That's the problem. You're nothing to me, William. 
Oh, no, no, no. You're beneath me. Oh, wow. William, you don't deserve her. And I wonder <gasps> what possible catastrophe came <gasps> crashing down from heaven and brought this dashing stranger to tears. Oh Nothing. my god, it's true! We should be alone. I see what you want. Something glowing and glistening. Something... Gleaming. Effulgent. So she gets the beauty of the words. Ow! 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 That is pretty much character alike. See, if people appreciated his work, he wouldn't be a vampire. If I can't teach you, maybe someday an angry crowd will. That. <laughs> or the Slayer. What's a Slayer? Oh, first blood of the Slayer. I mean, to most vampires, Slayer was a subject of cold sweat and frightened whispers. Got nothing to fear. Nothing but one girl. That's you, honey. Back then... But doesn't that just add flavor to the meal, the chase? Well, that sucks. I was expecting the Slayer to win. <laughs> First kill of the Slayer. Sorry, love. I don't speak Chinese. Just like Christmas dinner, isn't it? God, are they are they gonna do it? There's a corpse there. My little sprite just killed himself a slayer. <laughs> Ooh. Congratulations. I guess that makes you one of us. Don't be so glum, mate. It's intoxicating. Out here, this rebellion's starting to bore me. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Drew. Oh, that's a shot. Never been there. How'd you kill him, Spike? But he doesn't mind. <laughs> You're not ready to know. I'm ready. Oh, she's okay. she's not at a time to be tested. To be fair, Spike. So. Oh, oh, whoa, Spike! Death is on your heels, baby, and sooner or later, it's gonna catch you. Part of you wants it, not only to stop the fear and uncertainty, but because you're just a little bit in love with it. His speech is just, is just killer, I love it. Death is your art. You make it with your hands, day after day. That final gasp, that look of peace. Part of you is desperate to know it's what's amazing. it like. amazing, I'm stunned. She merely wanted it. Every Slayer has a death wish. <laughs> Even you. Oh, man. Very insightful shit there from Spike, though. You're gonna want it. And the second, the second... His coat! ...that happens, you know I'll be there. I'll slip in. And take the kill. A real good day. Oh my god. I'm loving this story. What the hell are you 
you doing? Oh, no! It would never be you. Ouch. You're beneath me. Oh! Damn! I am just in awe with this story. You're all covered with that. I look at you. All I see is the slider. So is that why she left? Because he was obsessed? Yeah, I put together that grocery list for you. Ooh. Okay. Uh, staying overnight at the hospital for observation. I'm getting a CAT scan. It's only one night. Oh, shit, and that's... They say, even if there is something, it's still very early if they didn't see it before. I'm gonna be... Oh, no. Really gonna try and do it, Spike? What's wrong? Spike. I don't wanna talk about it. Is there something I can do? Oh my god! Oh my god. Look at the light, this is really crushing my heart seeing him comfort her. Wow, wow, wow. That is definitely in my top five. Fuck. Wow. <laughs> oh man, it, it's... See, this is really emotional. Joyce's situation, it's getting even worse. If she's going to have a CAT scan, she's not been feeling too great, and I'm just freaking scared at the minute, and Buffy is, is, is feeling completely hopeless at this moment, and the fact that Spike went and comforted her, I think it speaks volumes, like, see, this is it. We kind of joked last season with Spuffy with um, something blue and how eerie that prospect was, but it might be a real thing. Because he's, that's it, he is so fixated on her. And there's been a, an existing fixation. Um, as it was established, but it's grown exponentially uh, within this season, and the fact he could have taken the shot, the fact he could have killed her there and then, he chose not to. He chose to comfort her. Just speaks, just, just, oh, it means a lot. Man. This is easily one of my favourite episodes of all time. I was just blown away, like halfway through the episode, I was just blown away with what they were doing. It only just got better, and I was really loving what they were doing with Spike. So I've got to say, this is easily one of my favourite episodes of all time. For me, I'm not sure if it if it's on their level, because Restless and, and Hush, they were... They were really marvellously done to the point where everything was just thrown in there. Like, every 
great element of writing. It was it was ingenious. But for me, this episode is near enough up there. I just love this so much. Yeah. And it's and then I'm not gonna lie, I, I think I like this is it. Like I I mentioned well, I didn't mention it before. But there was like this post going on that saying who is your favourite TV vampire? And mine was Spike. Because I just love his character, his attitude, and James Masters does a very good job at playing him, and this you know, this only just furthered my love for Spike so much. Not just the telling of his backstory and how tragic that was and seeing him kill those two slayers, but he's got that choice to kill Buffy there and then. Easily my favourite episode of season five so far. One of my favourite episodes of all time. It was just well done. From the very start to the very finish. It was brilliantly done. It was well shot, well acted, well written, well choreographed as well with the two fights with the Slayers and Spike. Um, this was a marvellous episode. This was up there in terms of uh, what I feel the greatest episodes of Buffy of all time. It was just really well done. James Masters really nailed um, his performance in Spike. This was his episode. And he owned it, so I really appreciated it. And I really loved, like I said, everything from start to finish. Even things that didn't directly connect to Spike's flashbacks. It was just really good to see just the interesting ways they went about with this episode. From the very, from the very start, where Buffy was nearly killed by your average Joe vampire. Um, which is, like... I really like that aspect. It's it's different than, okay, well, here's Buffy, and, uh, you know, she's going to slay this vampire, so, you know, fairly standard day. Um, but it makes her human. This this episode makes her human, and if, if anything, like, she nearly lost to the underdog. Because you can be skilled at something, but you could, uh, like, you could be really, really, really skilled at something. Um, but you'll tend to, like, how many sports stars have been maybe the best in the world and they'll make a mistake and it might be costly same with Buffy like she might be uh the most renowned slayer um for all of us but she will she can afford to slip and the underdog might have the advantage and that vampire nearly did if it wasn't for Riley so yeah but it also spawned her to um go on this path to finding out more about the Slayers. Again, this season has been about that. She's been trying to learn a bit more uh, to the point where she's appointed Giles as a watcher again. And this episode was her finding out about how did they go out so she could try to stop that from happening again uh, for her to be in that scenario where she faces death. And um, she, she becomes stronger, uh, learning a bit more regarding the Slayers and how they perished. And yeah, we keep forgetting about the fact that Spike himself has killed two Slayers, so he might have a lesson or two to to share um, to Buffy. And it, and because of that, it presented for some very amazing backstory regarding Spike, regarding William, before he turned bad. Because he said, I've always been bad, but you know, the flashbacks, his personality was not bad whatsoever. It was very humbling. Um, but he was bad in the eyes of he was a bad poet to to the rest of the audience. So, yeah, who they suck. They suck. Um, yeah, it, William was just really wholesome. Um, and I don't know, uh, but I kind of got like. I don't know. I kind of got like flashbacks to when he was on the swing with 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 Giles because he kind of reminded me like of that scenario uh, from Restless. So yeah, but um, yeah, uh, he, seeing a bit more regarding uh, William and uh, how he got turned into a vampire thanks to the returning Drusilla, who I saw an angel and I was like, yes. Yeah. So it's great we're seeing a bit more of her. But um, not just that though, but Darla as well and and. A, well, Angelus, uh, who are currently appearing on Angel as well. We got to see them. But um, yeah, we got to see how um, Cecily, I think she was called. Um, yeah, she, in a sense, kind of led 
William to becoming Spike because of the fact that um, Spike was so heartbroken with her reaction that he couldn't take it. And if 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 fate was a different uh, went a different way, if she appreciated what Spike had did, uh, Spike's feelings, then maybe Spike might have not become well. Maybe William might not have became Spike. So yeah, um, but yeah, it was really heartbreaking. I I felt so bad for William. It was, yeah, my heart broke for him because he had a genuine heart. Uh, he was very caring. He seemed to be very very humbling. Uh, when he was human, and um, yeah, he was shunned by um, by everyone. He was rejected and. Yeah, it, it was that case of nice guys finishing last and uh, for him. And this is the thing, because uh, Cecily um, said that, uh, I think that's her name, she she said that you're beneath me. It, it, it kind of it kind of birthed something for, for Spike to never feel that way again. So as Spike, he would always be on top. He would always make sure that he was never beneath anyone again. So to hear Buffy say you're beneath me, which I'm sure was in spite, um, it's kind of brought back these, like you saw how he reacted, it kind of brought back um, like deja vu of um, that day where uh, he died. So um, yeah, it, it would be heartbreaking. But there are these kind of parallels because he cared for that girl back in um, the 1800s. Uh, he cared for her. And he had feelings for her, and he has feelings for Buffy at this point. So they do parallel in a sense. It's so so even if if Buffy said you're beneath me out of spite or not, there are existing parallels to how Spike feels between both women. Um, but I feel like they might actually do something regarding Spike and uh, and Buffy. Uh, whereas obviously Spike couldn't get with that girl then, um, because then he turned into um, Spike, and there we go. So yeah, um. But they might be able to still do something regarding Spike and Buffy because the fact that, like I said, the fact is he could have killed her then and then. That was his objective. He got the gun out. He was ready to kill her. Didn't care if if he uh, was going to have a two-hour headache or not. He wanted her dead. So it comes to seeing Buffy cry because of Joyce and her upcoming CAT scan. Uh, and... It's like William, well, to be fair, I think William has, there's, there's always, because I think there's uh, always that aspect that parts of your, of, of who you were still reside within you. And that's the case of William with his, with his like genuine heart um, about how caring he is. There's a little dot of that like sprinkled around Spike. And because of his obsession with Buffy, Seeing Buffy upset, he's going to look out for her. So, and I think that speaks so much regarding how much, he, um, uh, like how much care he has. It it kind of does warm my heart. It's just interesting to see what's going to happen, uh, in terms of Buffy and 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 Spike. So, yeah, um, we'll just have to wait and see. But it was still really beautiful how he was giving her the pat on the back and. Yeah, um, it was great to just, like, there was, like, what, 30 seconds of them two just sitting in silence, and it was really beautiful, and it just broke my heart, so, yeah, and it really is breaking my heart, like, seeing Joyce go through this pain, because it seems like they're going in a direction where this is something you can't fix, Buffy. This is something that a slayer can't rectify. This is a real life scenario, and uh, Buffy feels so helpless in the aspect of her mother. So I'm really scared regarding what's going to be happening with Joyce, because when she said she she was uh, going to have a cat scan, um, this is where things start to get a bit more dire. This is where things get a bit more like heartbreaking, and you realize, okay, well, this is getting serious this is getting uh, really really more concerning as as time goes on because of course she's been battling with headaches and 
Um, I kind of, I, I do have a small hunch what it could be, especially if it's something very real. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. I'm just hoping that that she comes back and things go fine. Um, but we'll just, like I said, we'll just have to wait and see. But I feel like they are setting the stage for Joyce being afflicted with something that uh, is not solvable with a stake or whatever. It's something more grounded. It's something not supernatural. Because there are some things that Buffy can't fight. So, and this might be one aspect, especially since it, since it um, hits right at home. It, it hits someone that you love dearly. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, I really, really love um spike in this episode it was really good i just loved that monologue as well uh where he was talking about um where he was um talking about um like how death is on your heels and then it's gonna catch to you like you want it it's your art and and not just that though not just how it was worded as well because that was one of the great aspects about that scene but how it kind of blended into the two different time periods like you saw um spike narrating it in the flashback like he wasn't speaking directly to the to that slayer but he was it, it, it was like his 70s self was speaking speaking to Buffy, there was two different spikes speaking to her, but yeah, I really loved how that was shot and how the choreograph um, to Spike facing Buffy and um, Spike facing that second Slayer, it, it lined up well so, I, I, and the sceneries as well just helped so much as well, so um, yeah, I really liked that, but also this episode did a good job at like explaining some of the things, like he got that scar from the first Slayer, he, he collected he got his Co, as if it was a trophy, which I really loved because, of course, when Angelus brought up about the fact that uh, when he brought up about the Slayer, that created some new obsession. So he's always been obsessed regarding the Slayers, um, hence Buffy as well. But you know, he he has that really really big fixation uh, regarding. Um, it, it, it becomes an addicting feeling. It becomes something that you need to, to, um, it, it, you need to achieve. So yeah, but I just loved it. This episode was so, so good. Um, I also like the fact that this kind of explained, uh, this explained as well, why Drusilla didn't come back with, with Spike in season three. Um, we had a piece that was set after season two, before I, I'm guessing sometime before season well before Lovers Walk should I say, um, where Drew couldn't stand the fact that Spike was in love with the Slayer, so she decided to, yeah, she decided to walk it off. So, um, yeah, I, I really liked that explanation, but also like I said, it was great to see Drusilla again as well as Angelus and and Darla appearing on Buffy. Um, but, um, yeah, um, it was great to see how Drusilla saw, uh, how Spike feels for Buffy, especially since she was a Slayer then, and before Spike even recognised it, so, um, yeah. I also, uh, side note, I really liked Riley as well, um, like, there was a little, there was a little bit with the, him and the Scoobies, they didn't appear much, but he got basically revenge on the vampire that nearly killed um, Buffy. So I really like them. It was, it, it, there was that comedy um, uh, involved, but um, yeah, it was really good to see them involved, but yeah, fantastic episode. I just loved going into William. I loved how the, just the, how, just how well the layers of Spike's background flowed. It was just really good. Um, and it was good, like as well, trying to, ex like, this is it. It was expanding as well the the connection between Buffy and and Spike, uh, with with Buffy having to go to Spike. So, yeah. And see, I know we've had flashbacks before with Angel, of course, and how he got turned into a vampire. So, but I don't know. I feel like I loved this one even more, and I felt sorry a bit more for Spike than I did for Angel. I mean, I still felt bad for Spike, but uh, for Angel, should I say? But um. For Spike, he seemed William was a little cherub. 
he was trying his heart and everyone rejected him. Everyone made him feel like shit. Um, and he didn't really put a foot wrong. Whereas An- uh, Angel or Liam, um, yeah, he was very, he had a very, very, um, disapproving reputation to his family already. And, um, yeah, I mean, I still felt, felt bad for him, but, um, William was like a little cherub. He was trying his heart out and, uh, he was trying to impress people, but people wouldn't have any of it. So, yeah, um, but I just loved the narrative, um, I just loved the flashbacks. It was just really, really good stuff. And I loved soaking in Spike's dialogue because it was really well written. You could tell there was a lot of passion being put into Spike, especially when he when he uh, gave that last piece of advice, that like um, last lesson, uh, like how death is on your heels. That's a really, really mesmerizing quote. So, yeah, but also it, it does give you an insight um about how the te- two slayers were killed and uh, because of his experience, he's analyzed what made them lose. There's that difference between loss and victory. And uh, yeah, I just, I just loved it. It was just really good. And I have to say, I feel like Spike's in my top three favorite characters. And this episode helped big time because we got a bit more of it. Like we got a bit more of an insight with Spike's character um, and just how he acted in this episode especially when he was comforting Buffy in the end, it was just really good to see a lot more of Spike uh, through the ages. And um, um, also just seeing the differences between him and Angelus, how strict Angelus was. And there was this attitude that there was this, I don't know, superior attitude that, uh, that Spike had. I say this because he doesn't want to feel beneath anyone else again. So he's going to try and, uh, he he's gonna have that like kind of superiority feeling that like that confidence is gonna be beaming. So he's not going to feel beneath anyone ever again. So yeah, but I just really loved it. Like there was a lot of passion that went on with the with the script. You could tell with the with the language that was used, and it was just really beautiful. It was great to have some of the um some some things that were cleared up. Uh, regarding Spike and his past and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it was just really cool, as well as exploring a bit more regarding the Slayers. Um, Like we had a bit of focus on the Slayers uh, preceding Buffy. So yeah, it was really amazing that that we focused a bit more on that, as well as Spike lecturing Buffy about how every Slayer basically has a death wish. Um, So a really well written episode, well shot, well directed, yep, yeah, uh, well choreographed. It was just superb all around. Like I said, this is on level with Hush and Restless for me because of how it was done. And I just really enjoyed how this episode went by. So, brilliant stuff. Favorite episode of season five by a long shot. And I loved this. I really loved the focus on Spike so much. And. How he's easily my top three favorite characters of the Buffyverse. Um, so, yeah. And I will see you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. You can check my videos on the right if you want to check out more of my content. You can also subscribe to my media feeds and channel if you want to. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Hope you guys take care. And I will see you guys next time. Toodles!